My name is Ralph Beulein. I'm an application specialist with Montec. We are a German robot testing and instrumentation company. And today I want to report to you about our latest development about uh, high shear and low temperature testing with robot process analyzers. A quick introduction about Montec. We're a privately owned company originating from Germany, where we have uh, currently three manufacturing sites um, and our company has been growing since its inception in 1998, spanning over 60 countries all across the world with about 200 direct, 260 directly employed people. We're currently manufacturing in our three German and one US manufacturing locations, about 150 testing instruments per month, and solely dedicated to the rubber industry. We have a global network of sales, service, as well as showroom in Germany, US, but also all other countries with major rubber uh, companies presence all over the world. So today I want to report you a little bit about dynamic rubber testing. Rubber process analyzers have become state-of-the-art equipment, not only in R&D, but also in quality control in rubber factories. Basically, the application area of rubber process analyzers can be classified in four different segments. Utilizing the RPA as a raw polymer tester to assess, for example, viscosity, monocolor weight distribution, branching of polymers, gel content, as well as polymer aging properties. Furthermore, RPAs have been used to check processability, to simulate production processes, such as milling, extrusion to correlate, for example, to mold flow, dye swell, process viscosities, but also to dispersion. Then RPAs have been used basically since their inception as advanced cure meters to, of course, measure cure times, cure rates, cure conditions, reversion at isothermal as well as non-isothermal conditions. And the last and largest application group is to utilize dynamic rubber process analyzers as dynamic mechanical analyzers, dynamic mechanical testers, or dynamic thermal testers to assess after cure modulus properties, elasticity, viscoelastic properties, or correlate to final product properties such as heat buildup or damping, especially interesting for the tire industry. Here, however, there were limitations. Limitations in terms of the shear rate range that RPAs could cover, but also about the temperature available. Basically, customers had to utilize multiple equipment, TGA, DSC, DMA, RPA, to get a full picture and a full fingerprint of a certain batch or material. Also, the RPA was not successful in covering all related shear rates to rubber relevant processing steps, especially injection molding, extrusion mold, extrusion, mixing, calendaring processes um, had been always a challenge um, to be simulated with the RPA due to the shear rate limitations in oscillatory mode. Therefore, Montag has recently introduced the advanced applications package. This is a new drive technology and new control technology for rubber process analysis not allowing only to use the instrument in the oscillatory mode, but also using the RPA as a rotational rheometer. So it's a combined system that can do all the classic things the RPA was always capable to do with oscillatory frequencies up to 100 Hertz, um, strains up to 5,000% that typically translates into shear rates of about 100 per second. However, with the newly added capabilities of continuous rotation of the lower die in a rotational mode, shear rates up to 750 per second. So it means a 7.5 times higher shear rate range can be achieved. This adds the capability to classify and simulate successfully also high shear process. Once again, such as milling, calendaring, injection molding and extrusion. Large amplitude oscillatory shear has been now around for several years, but this is the next step, expanding the, expanding the capabilities of RPA systems. Combined with this, variable preloads 
programmed as drive offsets or pre-strains can be set for every subtest method, closely simulating the real application environment of your test sample or of your final product. And once again, this system also adds one more time to the layer's capabilities for high shear testing. All this paired with our normal force control system, eliminating all die gap variations, um, wall slip measurements are possible. So looking at the capabilities of the instrument, typically MDR instruments were only used for measure curing. RPAs were used to look at low to medium shear processing. Now with our advanced application package, new processing techniques can be successfully simulated in the RPA. Combined with our low temperature MCOOL minus 40 system, even lower test temperatures down to minus 40 degrees C are possible. This system is enabled by a newer direct drive motor, a motor that we manufacture in-house tailored to the requirements of the RPA. The lower die can oscillate, but also can continuously rotate. The lower die can be moved upwards and downwards, varying the die gap, controlled, uh, controlling the sample to a constant pressure to account for any die gap change or sample shrinkage. To always have with profiled dies complete slippage free test results. However, for specialty purpose, we offer over 40 different test die arrangements. Test dies can, for example, be flat dies for composites, for resins, but also can be flat or grooved, uh, flat or conical polished dies to intentionally measure wall slip. By comparing data with and without wall slip, the exact extrusion behavior um, of materials slip in the extrusion barrel could be tested and quantified, providing important information on the material's viscosity during high shear processing. Other processing techniques and measurement results include high shear heat buildup and thermal conductivity measurements, which can be realized by simply switching off the heating control system of the instrument and measure thermal conductivity from the high shear lower die to the upper die. This is not only suitable for rubber materials, but also, of course, for thermoplastic materials, thermosets, thermoplastics, and our new application group, also food, can be tested with rubber process analysis. This system is complemented with our unique die pressure management measurement and control system with a controlled closed loop normal force, not only controlling the die gap, but closely controlling the normal force on the sample. Here we see a comparison of high shear testing where we um, measured two samples, which according to uh, the manufacturer of a, or compounder of the um, material should be identical. However, we can clearly see high shear differences. First of all, we see a general decrease in modulus on the on viscosity on the left material, um, as well as a much quicker, um, as a much lower heat degradation, whereas um, the picture on the right shows that the material at high shear rates above 100 RPM quickly degrades because of a much lower level of molecular weight distribution and long chain branching, causing a much quicker heat buildup and destruction of the sample. This now allows us to simulate complex test sequences. For example, we have looked with one of our customers at injection molding process, where material passes through different temperature zones, as well as experiences different shear rates while it's traversing to the through the machine. First, the material is fed into the injection barrel. Then we have our high shear injection phase where the material is pushed through a nozzle into the mold, and then our temperature increase uh, and the actual molding cycle. Now, looking at the material response measured with the RPA with advanced applications package, we see stress relaxation 
while feeding at lower shear rates and then the actual 80 per second high shear injection phase causes another real major relaxation and of course also the heat up causes another change in the elastic torque and this combined with our molding phase allows now to get a full rheology profile of not only the curing but the full process the material passes through gaining a much better understanding of material properties but also for a tighter control of your process detecting batch to batch variations before they translate into processing errors all this can be complemented with one of our co cooling or advanced heating systems typically our instrument range from ambient temperatures to 235 degrees thermal range. Now with our MCOM 10 system, uh, a vortex cooling system, especially developed for medical applications, for example, silicones, allows cooling of the test dies sub-ambient to a lowest temperature of 10 degrees C. This is a very cost-effective system, not requiring any additional space as it's fully integrated into the machine. And then we have our MCOL 40, which you can see here on the right, which is our chiller system for sub-ambient cooling uh, down to minus 40 degrees, reaching almost glass transition temperature for several polymers. As well as also, we offer high temperature options for the resins, prepregs, thermosets, and composites up to 350 degrees C. Most of the manufacturing processes in the rubber industry are not isothermal. They're non-isothermal. What this means is the material passes through different temperature zones, which we see here, the material getting heated up in about three minutes time from ambient temperature to 160 degrees. And the same can be simulated with a rubber process analyzer to understand curing under these specific thermal conditions, as well as also changes of elasticity and viscosity. All this can be combined to complex processes, either in different ramps, or with different steps, simulating even the most challenging thermal profile. Or if you have a recorded profile, our mount control software can directly read your thermal profile from a file and process it in the instrument. And that brings us to a couple of applications for our MCOL-40 low temperature cooling system. Here we have an example where uh, we measure glass transition temperature successfully with the RPA. Or we have been looking at the plasticizing effect of oils, different oils or different quantities of oils in the recipe, um, changing significantly glass transition point and glass transition temperature. All this is only possible with our MCOL-40 options as we have the widest thermal range covered in the market for low temperature RPAs. Especially for the tire industry, this system has been found very useful. We have installed more than 70 of these systems at our global tire customers, re mainly related to tire labeling requirements, measuring rolling resistance, but also uh, rain or wet traction and ice properties. All this can be combined now in one single machine, in one single reliable test. Data acquired also allows us to create advanced cure kinetics models, uh, meaning by having rheological data available at different temperatures, we can easily calculate order of reaction, rate constants, incubation time, and most interestingly, also activation energy. This allows us to create normalized cure curves as well as Arrhenius plots, either for isothermal conditions or also, of course, for non-isothermal conditions. This can be used to also simulate processes. Here, after running the cure test, we have loaded a thermal profile of an autoclave of one of our customers and then compared his rheological data and we found that his production process was set up perfectly right as while opening the autoclave, he was reaching exactly 100% cure, avoiding any reversion, avoiding um, any lost process time and money lost. This can be expanded to non-isothermal testing by running either heating or cooling rams and loading them into the 
cure kinetics models, also activation energies for different states of cure, different cure times can be calculated. And last but not least, also this data can be used to do a one or two dimensional cure simulation. Here, for example, for a 20 millimeter thick rubber sheet, based on the rheological data, we can tell how fast at which position of the part the material will cure and based with this data, define optimum curing times for parts and geometries. My last topic I want to look at is the nonlinear material response, as we are now with our new systems are capable of even running higher shear rates, covering a wider testing range. Um, the nonlinear material response is becoming more and more important. Here, um, the input is still a traditional oscillatory or steady shear, means continuous rotation input from the lower drive system. However, our material response is no longer sinusoidal, but a distorted sine wave. This, uh, we have done extensive research and added Fourier transformation rheology by looking at higher harmonics, so it means frequencies higher than the original frequency, but also by plotting this data in a stress strain versus strain rate format, calculating long chain branching index. Based on these two models, uh, we are now able to create simplified reports in seconds, providing you a full overview of the nonlinear material response of your items that you are testing. Quantifying the level of branching, long chain branching, as well as also molecular weight distribution. So to summarize, low temperature testing creates new possibilities for quick tests on raw materials and compounds, complementing traditional test methods. Updated testing methods uh, are required to keep up with new raw materials and processing techniques especially high shear mixing, high shear milling, extrusion, injection molding. And Fourier transformation rheology is a required tool actually to understand the data derived from these tests um, and in order to quantify and correlate to your molecular structure and long chain branching. So to summarize is that all these new technologies allow you to within a one single test of only a few minutes, create a full fingerprint of your material dramatically speeding up your quality control processes by eliminating other traditional test methods, but also helping you in your R&D to quickly and easier get the right path and understand, um, understand your new developments and formulations and their properties. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to speak. I'll be available for questions later on. Thank you very much.